are you? Okay, so I haven't, uh, I didn't do a live video last week. We just let in a bunch of new Money Magic students. Um, so I'm super excited. Right now in the Money Magic course, we're in the middle of a bank account challenge. The bank account challenge in the course usually lasts about 10 days. <laughs> My challenges have been known to stretch for a whole month, right? So at this point, I've recorded, um, I'm in the process of recording 16 new meditations. And I have no clue what's going to happen with those meditations. Your guess is as good as mine. So probably they're going to end up being part of the challenge in some way. <laughs> Nobody's actually fully looking forward to that, right? Um, I can't wait to see what happens. Anyway, I wanted to get back to panic manifestation and just wrap that up, right? Um, wow, it's so... I wish I could show you guys how windy it is suddenly in Chiang Mai. Every time I start these videos, I'm in the midst of some crazy weather thing. Anyway, mm, Okay, so back to manifestation. So last week I had done two posts on panic manifestation, one on panic manifestation, and I will explain panic manifestation. That is not my term. My friend Evelyn Bandor made up that term, and it's actually quite interesting, and I'll explain it if you didn't read the post. And then also explained why we engage in panic manifestation, right? So a huge part of um, what Evelyn means by panic manifestation is when we manifest under panic situations. And I thought that was a good time to do it last week because it was month end. And I know at month end, um, emotions are high, right? It's like a lot is going on emotionally. We're freaking out. We're uh, having <laughs> issues because we're worried if we're going to be able to pay the bills and just do the very basics that we need to do in terms of paying our debts and paying our debit orders. So what most of us do is what Evelyn calls panic manifestation, which is that you manifest under panic conditions, right? It's under absolute panic. That's when you start asking the universe, this is what I want, etc. And we all do that because it's part of being human, right? It's that things can, we have a whole month, <laughs> a whole, whole month, and... <laughs> days before our goals are due and yet we all don't we all kind of pretend that month end catches us by surprise and i used to be one of the worst people at this right so a few days before month end when the bills have to be paid i would absolutely lose my mind and start to freak out and it was absolute murder and then every month you do get that money and you do pay off your bills and you're like oh <gasps> Yes, I did it, right? And you're like, oh my God, it's a miracle. Wow, how amazing. I didn't know where the money was going to come from. But that's also problematic because it's so anxiety inducing and it actually doesn't help us physically. You know, for most of us, we already feel the strain in our bodies, all that panic, all that worry, you know? And sometimes it's, I know with me, the case was that I didn't know I didn't have to, that I didn't have to experience that, that I could have a better experience when it comes to money. I honestly don't know because most of my life, what I had seen was all the adults in my life stressing about money and panicking. Come month in, it was an absolute panic right so when my mom left a job before when she had her job and she had her businesses I had never actually stressed about money money was never an issue for me then I got into high school my mom didn't have a job I lived with my uncle and my uncle my aunts my cousins everyone had this really intense outlook on money and as an adult, I grew up thinking that that was normal, that come month end, you stress, right? Is that things you worry, where's the money going to come from? You start to freak out. But what if it doesn't have to be like that? You know, I remember when I started doing the work and I, 
and I thought to myself, everyone tells you entrepreneurship is this hard, hard journey. You know, that building a company has to be hard and strenuous and you, you work so hard and you do all this hard work. And I remember the day when I started this, when I decided I wanted to travel and I had these thoughts, like how can I travel and build a company? And I had this same kind of thought that I had around money was, what if it doesn't have to be so hard? What if everybody's wrong? What if you can build a company and have fun and see places and have an adventure and all these things? And the minute I had that thought, then my next thought was, how can I build a company and have fun and not struggle and not have the constant, oh my God, month end and post about the struggles and woes of entrepreneurship and really have fun doing this? Because this is just one, like this is the norm that people have, but what if I can create my own norm? And that's the same question that I asked myself years ago around month end. It's like, okay, even if I don't have the money, is there another way that I can just go through month end without the anxiety, without the desperation, without all this insanity on my body? Because not even counting what happens when we feel desperate around money, which I will get into, but it's just like the absolute impact and stress that desperation has on our body. It's just not healthy. Right, it's like think about what anxiety does to our digestive system. Actually, studies are from Harvard University, and I'm like a walking case study for this because when I was super anxious, my body stopped digesting food, and I share about how I'm still years later working through healing my digestive system from just years of depression and panic from my teens all the way through my mid 20s where I was just like suicidal scared I just panicked and anxious all the time and most of the anxiety was about money all these emotions have an impact on our physical well-being so just in terms of our basic health can we just aim to just work from a place of calmness around money, right? And I'm just talking for myself because I just know what that has been like on my body. And yeah, I've healed tremendously. I mean, now I'm no longer drinking Pepto-Bismol. I'm no longer taking, um, what is this, vinegar. Like every time I had to eat, I would have to drink vinegar because my stomach didn't know how to digest. I needed to get chineitsang or harashiyatsu or um, lo chimin all the time. These are like um, abdominal massages just to help me with my body. I got acupuncture twice a week, you guys, for my digestive system, like literally needles in my tummy, uh, on <laughs> my arms and uh, like down on my feet because I just couldn't digest. That's how insane my anxiety was. It affected me on a very physical level. So I understand the impacts of emotions on our body, right? And it's not, not fun because I was spending money that even when I was super in debt, I needed that money to pay off debt, but it was between my health and paying off debt. And honestly, I figured that if I'm dead, I'm no good to anyone. <laughs> so I had to spend the money on my health, right? So this is where it's important. So that's the one thing. But also let's talk about just panic and desperation in terms of money, using money, spending money and making money and just manifesting money. Often when we're feeling panicked and desperate, when we are asking the universe for money from this place of desperation and panic, we never ask for the big amounts and feel calm, right? So when we're talking about, let's say, manifesting money, right, and asking from a place of just like manifestation and believing that we can have it, if we're already panicked that there's not enough money, that I don't have enough money, then just using the law of attraction terminology, which you guys know I don't like to use a lot, uh, but just to help people understand more of uh, where you're coming from when you're in panic and desperation is that you're not 
often you're going to ask, but because you're panicked and because you're feeling desperate, you're already in resistance. You're already blocking that from coming to you, right? So that's number one. But also just on a very rational scale, most of us are asking for just enough. And I think I mentioned this in the in the note in the status update in the discussion in this group which is um when you're just asking or when you're panicked often you're just thinking i just want this one thing now 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 just now this one thing so you're thinking in terms of short term right and you forget that next month you're going to be back at the situation asking for the same thing. Whereas if you're operating from a place of calm and not feeling panicked or desperation or desperate, that's when you can start to think of creative ways to make money. But you can also start to engage your mind, not on this immediate problem, because panic and fear by its very nature brings us to this immediate problem because what happens is we think in terms of do or die because when you're panicked everything goes up so you're going to fight or flight right so everything in your entire nervous system brings you to just this particular moment so our entire obsession comes down to i need to get the money for this but the problem with just asking for just this is that you're asking for just enough and next month you still have the same issue to deal with so wouldn't it make better sense to calm down and start thinking differently about money and i've said this in the free workbook and i often say this which is ask ask yourself how much do i need for my lifestyle for the next five years and obviously you are going to come up with a massive figure for that right but it doesn't mean that you have to make that money right now today this instant but it's that that's the money that you want to be asking for not just these little bits and pieces why not ask for the full monty instead of the little bit right and the beauty of the work is that as you start to work on your emotional state and your traumas around money you start to get braver in asking for the bigger amount so maybe even if you can't ask for the money that you need for the next five years what about the money that you need for the year because then the next a possible question is how can I make this money? It's not that the money is going to come into your lap and be miraculously dropped onto your lap and you're going to win the lottery. If that happens, great. But like I've said before, in South Africa alone, there are what 40 something million people. So if the, let's say that the universe is generous and we all do win the lottery, then there's only what we're winning like a hundred rand or ten dollars each of the lottery it's not much money right but if you do decide to take your life into your own hands and your financial journey into your own hands then the next question to ask is how do i do this which is when the interesting things happen around money where we start to think creatively around money we can look at the products we sell the services we provide that's when we start doing the mathematics around it right and i've said before that i know in this group that's not too popular and to be fair it's not too popular in the student group as well but i make my I, I make people do it right because that is important how else are you going to know how much you need to live your life right if i said to you what is the bare minimum that you need right now to be able to live the life that you want for the next year and you don't know if your job is going to fire you or not do you have a replacement for that income this is where we also need to become practical around money right we need to start thinking of savings and all those things because we don't know what other what will happen around money okay what will happen with our jobs what will happen in different parts of our lives okay so that's the one thing and then uh, so that's why also it's important to just be calm around money and because panic manifestation for lack of a better word and I love Evelyn's term so much it, it keeps us in this vicious cycle so ourselves at the same place and as Einstein said craziness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result 
If we want different results financially, we have to start doing things differently, right? So if every time we find ourselves in panic manifestation and we're asking for just enough to survive, just enough to get out, and we're not doing our part as to figure out how to get beyond survival mode, then we're in trouble. The second thing is when we're in panic mode, it's really, really difficult for us to sit with our bank accounts. And people that have done the bank account challenge know this, right? It's like most of us start off in panic mode. I myself started off doing this work in absolute panic, but I persisted because I was having panic attacks, right? So my digestion was absolutely messed up and I was having panic attacks on a daily. I could, you could say I had absolutely no option but to do this work. I'm sure if I had a different um, option or th maybe if things weren't so bad for me, I would have gone a whole different route. I would have taken my time. I wouldn't have done the work and I wouldn't have dived all in. But it was what it was, and I'm grateful that it, for me, everything was so extreme because it really got me to do the work. Because one of the things with panic is that it doesn't, uh, we have a hard time just sitting and being still with our bank accounts. If we can't sit with our bank accounts, it's really difficult for us to budget, right? And if we can't budget very well, then we don't know where our money is going to. Then we are not, we're not sure. And and I'm not talking, I think everyone that has done the bank account challenge, and if you haven't done the challenge, don't worry, it's coming up again in October. So, um, oh, <laughs> else if you're in the Money Magic course, we're already in the challenge, right? Today is day three of the challenge, so <laughs> you should already be doing the work on the challenge. But anyway, uh, when we can't budget and we can't see where our money is going, then it's difficult to say, then it's difficult to know where we can cut corners, right? Well, is cut corners the right word? I don't know. But it's basically, we can't say, okay, I can take off this particular item because it doesn't align with my values. And instead of using that money for something else, I can put it towards um, the car loan and pay off the car loan, right? So because we don't know how to do that and because money absolutely freaks us out, the most normal, um, the most normal reaction when we're in panic around money, and it's completely normal because it's completely human, is to go into fight or flight. So what we will do is run from our finances, and we tend to run from our finances by avoiding them, right? So the more that we avoid our finances, we stop opening up credit card bills, we stop taking calls from debt collectors, we just run from everyone that we owe money to. And trust me, I've been there, like wouldn't answer friends, phone calls, and emails. I'm shocked I still have these friends, right? I'm laughing because I really do have incredible friends, and I'm so shocked that, like, my friends are my friends. But there we are. I still have the same friends. My family still loves me. But I would run away from people because I was like, well, I owe these people money. I can't answer their phone calls because the first question they're going to want to know is, where is my money? And you can't blame people, right? It's like everyone wants to get paid their money. So we tend to run. So when we're in panic, we tend to run away from money. And obviously, we don't make the best financial decisions when we're running away from money. We need to be able to see where money is going and what we're doing with money to make the best decisions, which is also why panic manifestation is not a good thing, because that's when most of us get paid end of the month. And because there's just so much happening with our debts and so much happening with our bills, you'll hear someone go, Oh, I got paid this month, but I don't even know what happened to the money. It's like money's watered through my hands. I can't pinpoint what I did with the money. So if that's you every month, end, then you really need to start sitting with your panic, right? Start sitting with your anxiety every month end before doing anything with that money. Your job should be to just sit with that money in the bank and to just observe your breathing, observe your sensations in your body, observe the emotions in your body. And yeah, even if it means sitting for three days, what I do, what I've um, 
What I did last year with the Money Magic students was I said to them, please sit for three days before paying anyone with the money in your bank account because this thing of money just going like water through your hands as soon as you receive it is coming from some anxiety and or some other emotion and we won't know that emotion. I won't know what emotion is causing that. There's so many emotions. in the world and everybody reacts differently to different emotions and every emotion carries its own memory carries the thoughts ocean and then i make them go to lesson one meditations in the money magic course um the meditations are meditations that are geared to get you into your body and help you understand what memories thought and thoughts you store in your body and there's one that just helps you clear and release the emotions that are stored in that particular body part but until you get if you're not in the course just do this right it will still help in um it will help i mean obviously the meditations are the thing that will like whew, open up stuff but this is still a great help which is just sitting with what's going on when you're looking at your bank account on payday because often when we don't know what's going on and when we're running from money that's when money is also running from us because if money was a lover and you're running from your lover imagine you have this relationship with your lover which you've had with money all your life even though you're not aware of it from the time your parents were giving you money to go to buy bread at the shop. You were sensing the emotion that your mother would give the money to you, right? Is the, the emotion your mother had when she gave the money to you and part of you held on to that emotion. Because we're energy beings, we can sense things and kids are so like absorbent. They sense things in the ether, you know? So you were sensing that. Whatever, when parents were speaking about money, you sensed it. So you already had a relationship with money long before you started earning money, long before you even understood the importance of money in your life, right? You already started having a relationship with money because of the adults in your space and because of society at large, right? So what you want is so all those emotions are play and are triggered every time you manage money all those memories come to the fore right they very subconscious you're not aware of them but all these things are coming to the forefront whenever you're managing money so every time you get paid and that ding 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 goes off in your bank account there's something happening within you at a very subconscious level your memories your childhood memories your buried childhood traumas are triggered and you're not aware of it right and so it comes up as some emotion and then some behavior around money and most of the time because it's uncomfortable we want to run from money but Back to the idea of money as a lover. If I had a lover and every time this lover shows up, I want to run away from them and they make me feel some type of way other than romantic and happy. Do you think that my lover is going to want to stick around? Don't you think that my lover would want to go to someone, that woman that makes them happy, makes them feel some type of way, makes them feel excited, makes them love themselves? it's the same with money so every time we manage money we're triggered and then we run from money and all that energy goes into our entire financial dealings why should money stick around right so how we do or what we do with that is it always comes back to this is we heal the traumas we heal the triggers a lot of it is from uh, this lifetime childhood teens other um some of it is from ancestral stuff other times it's from past life stuff but we have to heal it right so as you sit with your bank account though you also start to just reprogram yourself so that's one aspect of the bank account challenge and okay so i think i've uh, basically explained what's happening with um our bank accounts i've explained panic manifestation and the reason behind panic manifestation and I think I actually also um, explained why we engage in panic manifestation, which is really just that we're scared, we're running, we have all these emotions, all these triggers, all these traumas around money, and we actually think we're protecting ourselves. We're not. This is not how you protect yourself around money. And I keep hearing people in this group saying, 
I'll do the course when I'm ready. Oh, I'll start doing the deep work around money when I'm ready. I'm laughing because I used to be the same way. It's not that I'm just laughing because I thought that would work for me as well at some point, right? I'd run away from things because I thought I'd only be ready to start talking investments, be ready to start saving, be ready to do this, this deep work around money when I was ready. And I was never ready. And in the meantime, when I was getting ready, right, what was happening was that my finances were becoming worse and worse and my digestive issues got worse and worse. And I guess for me, like I say, my issues got so bad that I couldn't digest food anymore that I was like, if it, I'm ready now, you know, like it's between my health and my life and I'm ready now. So for most people, they're very lucky because they have options. Things haven't gotten so bad that your health is falling apart. Your health is still intact. Your health isn't falling apart like mine was. And your emotional well-being is still okay. You're still emotionally stable. You're still able to manage things. I wasn't. I was fully depressed and wanting to end my life and fully suicidal. So for me, there was just no other option. It was heal or <laughs> like face this how that you're in. So I chose healing. So there is no such thing as ready, right? This is as ready as you're ever going to be. So the longer you leave things and the longer you wait to get ready, the longer things get worse and worse. And I really don't want, I really keep talking about it because I don't want people to get to this work at the point that I got to this work where it was literally in fear of for my own health, for my life, where I was like, I don't know what's going on and I'm scared. And I was scared of myself and what I would do. Like I didn't even want to be alone because I was scared what I would do if I was left alone with my own thoughts, right? What I would do to myself. So don't let it get to, uh, don't let it get to that point. Start doing the work now, right? So let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you're wondering what more you can do, there's a free uh well, there's a free workbook on the Wealthy Money website on the homepage. So if you just go to wealthy-money.com, download that workbook. And there's also a free masterclass coming up in July, end of July. And it's wealthy-money.com forward slash masterclass, right? So these are complimentary products that I give to people because I know sometimes when you're down in the dumps and you're really struggling with this, how that can feel, right? How this journey can just feel like so overwhelming. So hope that this absolutely helps you take advantage of these complimentary resources. People usually just read the articles in the blog and usually see a huge shift. So let me know in the comment section, in the video, here in the Facebook group, what your thoughts are, where you're at in terms of the work, what are you feeling? In the meantime, I have been gifted with an amazing gift. I'm going to spend uh, this weekend at a retreat center. What? Uh, I was, I, I think it's banyantree21.com. Um, don't quote me on that. Maybe it's not the proper, <laughs> uh, it's not the proper website, right? But I'm going to the Swift, I'm going back to the retreat space and I'm going to get another five hour massage. I've got a five hour massage on Wednesday. Mm. And guys, this is not me exaggerating, right? But I woke up this morning, I looked at my inner thighs and because there's one place in my body that I, um, the last few years where I started getting cellulite and I was always like, I've never struggled with cellulite, what the hell is going on? And then yoga wasn't helping, I was like, okay, let me just accept my fate, this is part of life, you know? And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I don't have any more cellulite. I literally like went a little ham and I sent a few of my friends voice notes. <laughs> these, are the, <laughs> these are the side effects of being my friend, right? It's like you get crazy voice notes from out of the blue about random things like this. I was like, 
oh my God, the five hour massage did the thing. So I'm going back for another five hours tomorrow, sleeping over at the place because I've been I gifted with this gift of spending time there and getting body work done. And they would like me to try out as much of their treatments as possible. All complimentary, all a gift. I didn't really know um, about this place. And then I started talking to, and then my fr a friend of mine hooked me up. Oh, I love my friends. <laughs> so she hooked me up with, um, with um, I had to pay, obviously, but she told me about this place. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely going. And then the owner met me and we just hit it off. And she was like, I really feel moved to gift you with um, with a complimentary stay. And then you can spend like a whole day trying out our treatments and everything. So tomorrow I've got um, my five hour Kundalini massage, which I'd already booked him and I'm paying for. And then they do it. And then I'm staying and doing a full on full Sunday of complimentary body work. So it's about, I don't know, five to six hours where I'm just getting another massage and some body work and then as part of this um complimentary thing they also gifting me with a body reading an element body reading which is basically they do a reading of your body and they kind of look at what possible ailments could develop based on past life and ancestral stuff that they can and ancestral energies that they sense in the body so that's one and then they also look at what is the main element which is very ayurvedic right which is am i mainly a um am I mainly fire am i mainly i don't know what is the other one i'm not so good with that but it's i know it's air fire mm, I don't want to say earth, but what's, oh, okay, Let, oh, water, right? So they'll try and figure out what is my main element. And then from there, they can also tell you the times that I'm uh, most productive for you to sleep, things to eat, like basically do a whole eating chart for you, all that good stuff. It's just, yeah, so I feel really really blessed <laughs> i feel like the last few months i just keep it's i mean i do get gifted with a lot of things this is true right but i just feel like in vietnam i got this amazing upgrade at my villa right at the same price and then later at a discount for god knows what you know and um there was one day where the lady in Vietnam, uh, the owners of the villa, the two women cooked for my friend Evelyn and I, and they cooked us a dinner for no reason, just for existing. They were like, we just feel moved and we just want to cook you guys a complimentary dinner. So we came and cooked us like this amazing dinner. And now I feel like I'm gifted with this amazing stay at this retreat space and we'll be uh, fed some wonderful raw foods and all sorts of amazing things and they also pick you up from well they pick me up and they're picking me up again tomorrow and they'll drop me off again because it's a little out of Chiang nights in Chiang Dao. so yeah so I feel like yeah Definitely a lot of amazing stuff is happening. I receive gifts. I And these are the kinds of gifts I love, right? Like, <laughs> it's not just random gifts, gifts to do with food, with body work, with healing. I just love all those gifts. So, okay, guys, have a fantastic weekend. I know I'm going to have a phenomenal weekend starting from 9 a.m. tomorrow. And let me know your thoughts so far on everything that's going on in the group. If you have any questions around on this video let me know otherwise go to wealthy-money.com and download the free workbook the complimentary workbook cheers mm. okay